Ann Taylor Pittman with Cooking Light. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have a really great New Year's reset dinner idea to share with you. Now, unfortunately, today we are not actually live, so if you have questions, I can't respond to you live, but please do leave any questions in the comments, and we're going to try to anticipate any questions you might have as we go through today. So today I am making crispy salmon salad with roasted butternut squash. Sorry, I should have looked at the name of the recipe before I started talking. Um, and it starts, it's a 20 minute dish, and it starts with heating your broiler with a pan on the oven rack so that the pan gets really, really hot. So I've done that already. Let me grab that pan. And yeah, it is super hot. So I need to be very careful not to touch this pan. I'm very bad about forgetting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my oven mitt right here on the corner as sort of a reminder to myself. I have two and a half cups of sliced onion that I'm adding to the pan. I don't know if you can hear it sizzling, but it sounds awesome. I know that this means dinner is quick. One lemon that I've cut in half, those go cut side down onto the pan. Now the broiler is gonna make really quick work of cooking these vegetables. They're gonna get kind of charred. So I always talk about the broiler being like an upside down grill. Um, so it's going to cook these things very quickly with that awesome concentrated heat. Let me put this in and set my timer for seven minutes. And could you use frozen butternut squash here? Oh, that's a great question. You probably could use frozen butternut squash. It's going to be a little bit, um, oh shoot, sorry. Um, it's going to be a little softer in texture. So if I were using the frozen butternut squash, I would line the pan with parchment paper or foil that I've coated with cooking spray because that softer texture might make it adhere to the pan a little more, stick to the pan. Um, okay, so while that's going in the oven, now the beauty of this dish is it takes 20 minutes, but you kind of need to multitask, okay? So while that's going in the oven, I'm gonna cook the salmon here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna need a little bit of canola oil for that, which I have here. Sprinkle my salmon fillets, gorgeous, nice six ounce salmon fillets with a little salt and pepper. Some of that salt and pepper is gonna go into the dressing for the salad. So this is a complete meal full of vegetables and with the nice heart healthy fats from the salmon. Okay, so let me add some canola oil here to my pan. Swirl it around a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to, so I, I put the salmon on some paper towels just to kind of dry out the skin because I want the skin to get really nice and crispy. So I'm going to add the salmon, skin side down to the pan, which is not quite hot enough. I'm going to take it out because I want that pan to get good and hot before I add my salmon to it. So let me just kind of go through some of the other ingredients that we're going to use here. These are for the dressing. So once those vegetables are done, they're gonna to get tossed with some greens with this dressing that includes olive oil, rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, you can use cider vinegar. I'll go through that again as we go through. Um, let's see, a little bit of maple syrup, Dijon mustard, salt and pepper, and then some orange zest. Finishing touch is gonna to be these beautiful pomegranate arils. So let me move this pan out of the way. Okay. Now this skillet should be hot. So this is a good lesson. If you haven't allowed your pan enough time to preheat, don't proceed. Um, it will affect the way that the fish cooks. Okay, now I hear a sizzle. I know that my pan is hot enough. And what do you look for when you're buying fresh salmon? That is a really good question. I um, want salmon that is ideally a relatively even thickness all the way throughout. This piece is a particularly good example. When you get more toward the, the thicker end of the fish, you'll see that the pieces are thick on one end and, little, and they taper and are thinner on the other end. And that's gonna mean that this end is gonna get more well done than the thicker middle portion. You want the flesh to kind of have a nice firm texture. Uh, you don't want any, you know, um, obvious huge gaping kind of where the flesh is pulling apart. Um, this is a farmed Atlantic salmon. It's gonna be lighter in color than the wild, beautiful deep red, um, was it, uh, sockeye 
or king salmon. But this is a lovely option and super sustainable. So, um, and it has a very good kind of rich mouth feel when you cook it. Okay, so let me put that over there. Okay, so while that is cooking, and I'm keeping an eye on my timer over there for what's in the broiler. Again, I have olive oil, rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, use cider vinegar. Two teaspoons of maple syrup. Honey would work as well here. Let's see. A wee little bit, one and a half teaspoons of Dijon mustard. So the Dijon adds such a lovely, rich flavor to the vinaigrette, but it also helps it emulsify. Um, it sort of stabilizes everything so that it emulsifies and comes together into an emulsion. Okay, I'm gonna start whisking this and then I'm gonna grate my orange zest. I always like to grate it fresh, pretty close to the time that I use it if possible. I only need a half teaspoon of this. Now there's not a ton of acidity here, but we're gonna use some of that lemon that's on the pan in the broiler. So I'm leaving my salmon in here undisturbed to get that skin nice and crisp. I'm on medium high heat. Okay, just need about, whoopsie, half a teaspoon of that. Whisk, 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 we're all good. Okay. Now let me pull my greens together. So like I said, you've got several components going, you've got several things going, you're multitasking as you go through this recipe, but it is a really great, quick weeknight dinner. You just kind of have to be on your toes. These look great. The other two did not fare so well, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. So at home, hopefully your pan, your oven, or stovetop will not have a hot spot, and you'll be all good. Okay. Stuff in the broiler is almost done. So I'm just taking some curly kale off the stem. Just need four cups of that. I may have a little too much here, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that skillet off. The pan will still stay a little bit warm to finish cooking those fillets and I'm afraid I'm gonna burn the other side. Okay, so my timer is going off. Ooh, the, the lemon has really started juicing out. If your pan warps like that when you pull it out, it's okay. As it starts to cool down, it will flatten out. So these vegetables are done. It only took seven minutes. They're done. They picked up a little bit of char under the onion. They're done, but not mushy. Oh yeah, that butternut is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute and finish pulling some kale leaves. You could use lacinato kale if you want, um, if you're not a huge fan of curly kale. I like kind of the hardiness of curly kale and it's always super inexpensive, so. I only need four cups of that. And you'll just do one more. Ah, let me finish out this leaf. It should be about four cups. So four cups of the torn curly kale, which has a great hearty texture. Four cups of baby spinach. Pull this over here. These gorgeous vegetables go in. I'm kind of placing them around the sides because I don't want them to completely wilt that baby spinach. But it's okay if this is a little bit of a warm salad. Now I think I only need about half of this lemon. It's going into the vinaigrette. So I think I only need about half of this lemon in terms of how much lemon juice I need for the vinaigrette. I'm just going to whisk, whisk really quickly to kind of make sure everything's emulsified. Oh, it's super juicy. 
Wow. So, so wow. why roast the lemons? So roasting gives, if you get some browning on there, which unfortunately I did not get a lot of browning, it adds another flavor element, a little bit of caramelization. But also, since this pan was going in the oven anyway, what the roasting does is really gets all the juices coming out of the lemon. Like this neck, this other lemon half, I mean, it's super soft. You can get a ton of juice, hmm. just a ton of juice out of there. That's actually not a bad idea if you were going to make some lemonade and you needed to get every last bit of juice out. Okay, so I have everything here in the bowl, the vegetables that I quickly broiled. I've got the kale, the spinach. Now that vinaigrette goes on, give it a quick toss toss. I want to be kind of gentle because I don't want to break up those butternut squash cubes. They're tender, but not mushy, but I just want to be careful that I don't damage them by tossing too vigorously. At home, I would get in here with my hands, I think. <laughs> Whenever I'm tossing a salad at home, just getting in there. It works. Don't be afraid to use your hands. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The last step here is to put on the pomegranate seeds or pomegranate arils. I'm gonna reserve some so that I make sure that my plated dish is really pretty. So, let's see. I'm gonna take some of the salad here. This serves four, so you get a pretty nice big serving of salad. That great kale, the butternut squash, the onions are soft. Here's the thing about onions. So if um, you have kids who are picky eaters, mine aren't picky, I'm very lucky. But when it comes to onions, if the onion is crunchy, they won't eat it. But if it's soft, they'll eat it. These onions are pretty soft. Okay, throw in some pretty pomegranate arils there. And then let me get my gorgeous salmon filet. I'm gonna be very careful, this is metal. I don't wanna scratch the pan. I'm just kind of using it. Oh yeah, look at that. That is gorgeous. The skin is super crisp on the bottom and the filet is nicely cooked. Turn that around. Huge, nice serving of salad. A lovely portion of heart healthy seafood. This is a great dish to start you off on the new year and a new commitment to healthy eating. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you've been watching on Facebook, please like and share this video. If you've watched on YouTube, please subscribe so you'll get notifications when we go live. And thank you so much. I'll see you next week.